But this particular kind of arrogance that St. Francis was dealing with is not there because there's nobody really to look down on. Today, if we see poor people, we think, how can we help them? We don't feel inflated in our egos because of their poverty. So that comes when there is widespread poverty, and it probably will come again when there's a crash. But uh, it wasn't, it isn't today's problem, and therefore it wouldn't be a realistic way of inspiring people, because the real issue is not whether you're rich or poor. The real issue is whether you are arrogant or humble, whether you think of yourself or whether you think of God. And what St. Francis wanted was to get people to live for God and forget uh, relying on, on this world. So that's Franciscan poverty. That's why Master said, I prefer Lady Simplicity to Lady Poverty. And uh, simplicity was the real message of St. Francis. His simplicity would be our poverty. And in fact, it was poverty in those days too, because he really didn't have anything. But there's no reason for a renunciate today to just go around in rags. And there was one man Master met in Phoenix who was dirty and unkempt and dressed in rags. And Master said, why, do you, why are you like this? And the man said, I'm a renunciate, very proudly. <laughs> Your renunciation also can lead to pride. And Master said, no, you're not. You're, you're caught all over again, this time by, by confusion and, and disorder. <laughs> and uh, so simplicity is the real thing. And of course, St. Francis came from a very wealthy home. His father was the most prominent merchant in Assisi at that time. And the people who followed him were many of them, not the poor, but the rich, the aristocrats. And in fact, if you go to India and go visit the ashrams there, you'll see that by and large, the inmates of the ashrams come from well-to-do homes. I don't say necessarily rich, but well-off. You don't see very many peasants there. It's uh, when you're very poor, usually you have to spend your whole time thinking where your next meal is coming from. <coughs> and God doesn't want that from us. St. Francis came at a certain time to try to bring the whole Christian scene back to the center of loving God. And you can't love God if you're loving wealth and your own importance. But that was a secondary message to his devotion and his joy. And the Catholic theme on St. Francis is much too much, uh, gives much too much emphasis on his suffering. He wasn't suffering. He was joyful in spite of the suffering that was poured upon him. And in fact, he wrote that Canticle of the Creatures when he was on his deathbed. And St. Clair and one of the brothers came down to bring him his breakfast, and they expected to find him just helpless on his pallet. And instead, he was blind by then, or almost blind. He'd found his way to a tree and was leaning against the tree, and they were just horrified. And he said, listen, sister, listen, brother, to this wonderful song God has given me. And he sang this, this first version of the Canticle of the Creatures then. But it's a, it's a song of joy. And it was, it's been greatly misunderstood and totally abused, you might say, distorted by that movie, Brother, Son, <coughs> Sister, Moon, where you get the impression that he's glorifying the beauties of nature. What he's glorifying is God for creating all those beauties. But he also says, uh, praises God for death and praises God for suffering and uh, all of those. We have to thank God for everything, but it's God we have to thank. Otherwise, it's idol worship. And he wasn't worshiping brother, son, and sister moon. He was calling brother and sister in the great family of God.